Hi, and welcome to the 10th edition of LA Ram Central. In just a moment, I'm going to be getting Vince Ferragamo on the phone to do an interview where we will be discussing the um, current Ram situations. I'm going to ask him some kind of fun questions. We're going to do a word association game, and I'm going to wrap it up with, uh, I think, the most important question, which is who one idolizes when they're as successful as Vince Ferragamo is. Hope you guys enjoy the interview, which is about to take place with Vince Ferragamo. Well, I just want to kind of give a quick introduction from the stuff that I've done from the research on you, and feel free to jump in if there's something that you want to elaborate more on. Okay. Um, you're from Carson, California, and you grew up a Rams fan, correct? I'm actually from Wilmington, California. Oh, it, it's Wilmington. Okay. So you're yeah. from you're from Wilmington, and then you grew. Is it true that you grew up? You grew up a Rams fan, is that correct? Um, yeah, the Rams were low. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, I grew up then. Okay. And then I know that you went to Cal for two years, but then transferred to Nebraska. Yeah. And Ray tells me you're a big Cornhusker fan. Um, yeah. Obviously, you played from the, for the Rams from 77 to 84. Um, but there was that one year you went to the Canadian League. Um and then you went to Buffalo in 85, Green Bay in 86. Um, fun fact, you were 31 and um, you you have like the fifth best win percentage for a Ram quarterback or fifth most wins for a Rams quarterback. I didn't know if you were aware of that. No, I wasn't. <laughs> um, you have a couple things I found on your website for your um, the golf tournament that you no longer host. You have obviously Touchdown Realty, which your wife kind of helps you run correct right and right. then and then you have um you had that golf tournament for a while that helped nonprofit organizations like the special olympics and stuff and you did that for over 30 years is that correct yes uh yeah we did uh, 30 years for a golf tournament for special olympics that's awesome that's awesome and then hey, Anthony, I got, i've got a thing here that just came out in the uh wall street journal for late bloomers why the Redskins should be wary of committing to uh, Kirk Cousins. And the quarterbacks that have a breakthrough season is measured by passer rating relative to league average in their 26th and 27th year of age. A minimum eight starts. He sits on the top of that list. Vince Farragall. There you go. And then you got Virgil Carter, Terry Bradshaw, Randall Cunningham, James Harris, Chris Miller, Scott Mitchell, Kirk Cousins, Vince Young. So that means that of the young quarterbacks that first came into the league, I had the highest rating. And then they go, well, what happened to them? You know? So they're saying, is it going to be like, history suggests that Cousins is far more likely to be the next Vince Ferragamo whose NFL career derailed after he signed with the CFL Montreal West. <laughs> well, so this came out, this came out in, uh, like last week in the, uh, the uh, Wall Street Journal. So that's pretty cool. That is pretty I cool. Had a, I had a rating of 126 in 1980. Yeah, we. Well, yeah. You were the team's MVP in 82, though. You had a great year. I know the team struggled, yeah. but. Yeah. Well, 19 and 1979, 19 by 1980, at age 25 and 26, um, I had a rating of 126. Wow. So yeah, that's that's like ahead of all these guys. And, well, you know. It didn't last. You know, sometimes, though, it, it, I think people get lost in the shuffle. I've talked about this on the show before. I think people get lost too much in the numbers. It's The fact of the matter is, after you left, even with Jim Everett, and I like Jim Everett, that was I was about 8, 9, 10 years old, you know, in 87, yeah. 88, 89. You know, but even with Jim Everett, it, it, you, just, you didn't have the same feeling going in Sunday as you did when Vince Ferragamo was under center. So, you know, sometimes those statistics, they're, they're important, but it's not the end-all, be-all that you look for. And, you know, yeah. I mean, playoff time, I, I'm, I don't know if you would have been, done much better than Dieter Brock against that Bears defense in 85, but statistically you, you had a pretty good record against them and you did pretty well against the Bears. Yeah, we would have thrown more than one pass, that's for sure. <laughs> right, seriously. Um, okay, so I know you got a lot to do today, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to – you know, get through this here pretty quick for you. Um, there's a few questions that I wanted to ask. Um, what was it like for you when the decision came down that the Rams are going to go back to LA? Like, 
how, how was it like from your perspective? Oh, wow. It was, it was exciting news because everybody was on edge thinking that what's the vote going to be from the NFL? Are they going to accept the, the Chargers or Raiders at, at the Carson Stadium? Or is it going to be at the Hollywood Park Stadium for the Rams? And, you know, we were all thinking that, God, you would think that the, the number one choice would be the Rams, especially they've been here for 50 years and coming back. They still have a great fan base here in Southern California. So, and sure enough, it did turn out to be that way. And they voted correctly, I think, because – I think it's best for the league, and it's it's uh, great for the owners, and and uh, especially the players who come back to Los Angeles. Yeah, I thought the relocation committee it, it stunned me how many how you know you had a guy from you had Hunt from the Chiefs organization who was the only one to not vote, but the Maris from from the Giants organization voted against the Rams moving in that first initial committee vote, and I was I didn't understand that. That was really surprising to me. Well, you know, there's a, there's been so much controversy over the Rams of, of their move coming back to Southern California. Is it going to be in downtown L.A.? Is it going to be in Orange County at the old Anaheim Stadium? Or is it going to be out in Simi Valley somewhere? Or, you know, out in, uh, in Rancho Cucamonga or Pasadena? Nobody knew where they were going to go. They had all these different organizations that were trying to lead and be a leading role in bringing the Rams back to Southern California. But, you know, the real truth of the matter is that Stan Kroenke, the owner of the team, was going to have the last say-so of whatever he decided to do. And when after he bought the property in Inglewood, you knew that, hey, this seems like a natural thing for the Rams to eventually come back. This was maybe three years ago. So, I mean, the groundwork was laid then, and it just was a matter of follow through, you know, eventually getting it done. And uh, But you have to have approval. You just can't you know, Stan wanted to do it the right way, put it to a vote, put it to all the other NFL owners, and, you know, he went about his, his, his business, you know, pragmatically, and they, they did it the correct way. I mean, they just, they got the vote, they got the acceptance from the league, and it's going to turn out best for the entire league. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I had a gut feeling, though, that he kind of had the, the league kind of in a tough spot because... I don't think Stan was going back to St. Louis, no matter what the committee decided, no matter what the vote was, because like you said, he'd already well, no, bought in the land. Yeah, he had made up his mind he was going to be moving, and I think it was pretty evident in St. Louis too. The fans felt it, and the mm-hmm. fans knew about it as well. Definitely. And so, but you know, he had the final say. So he's the owner, and you know, money talks, and this is a game of uh, of high dollars. You know, it's big stakes. It's a lot of money to own these teams today, and you know, you certainly have to have what's the primary focus today is the stadium is it state of the art is it conducive to the technology it, you know do they have the big screen the jumbotron do they have the sound effects do they have the, the, the great appeal for for having other venues at this uh, at this uh, uh stadium so you know it's uh, he's a real estate developer and he knows how to do it the right way and he's picked one of the probably the best sites to have it put in Southern California. Yeah. It's going to mean you know, a lot to the local community here. Well, my only fear is that eventually the league's going to price out people like me, a father of, of two, a family of four. You know, it, it tickets are getting pretty pretty high in prices. So. Well, you're right. Supply and demand is a big thing. And, you know, what I've seen from the Super Bowl side of it, the prices on Super Bowls, tickets have just skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've gone astronomical the last 10 years and it's uh you know it's unfortunate because no one could afford eighteen hundred dollars a seat for a game like that you know and and that's just face value of a ticket so yeah it does get to be a point but i i think that you know it's business as usual but i think there'll be enough money to be said that there should be a reserve of so many seats for people who want to bring you know, their kids to the game. Now, it may be first come, first serve, but I can't see them, you know, you know, having a hundred percent of the seats reserved high dollar pricing. So mm-hmm. I think there should be some kind of, you know, uh, some ticket price so see if people can afford to go to a game, you know, depending on, you know, hopefully they make a, a little bit of money to afford to go. But everything else, forget the ticket price, it's the parking, it's the concessions, it's Everybody else, all the um, the vendors that are at the games that, you know, make it real kind of a, a real expensive day out, you know. Definitely. So another question I had for you is what are your opinions on Nick Foles, Case Keenum, and Sean Minnen, or Manon? 
I, I've had a lot of back and forth with some of my fans that watch the show and, and leave comments. And it, it seems like for me, having coached 15 years, played since I was eight up until the point when I was 18 and then coaching every year until last year, you know, I've been in the game a lot and quarterbacks, I, I just don't understand why everyone was kind of harsh on Nick being coming from a totally different program and style to the Rams. But I don't know, maybe I would like to get your input on the three quarterbacks that the Rams currently have. Well, I, you know, I like Nick Foles. I, I thought he was a, you know, a great pickup uh, for the Rams. But, you know, being in Los Angeles now, especially playing here in Southern California, it's going to be controversy again. You know, I've played my whole career with a quarterback country in L.A., so the controversy probably will never go away. But if I were to pick one quarterback um, to lead the team, uh, certainly it's going to have to be, you know, the co a coach's decision and based upon what kind of coaching philosophy you're going to have. And I think Nick fits in very well with, uh, he's versatile, he can do a lot of different things. He's a winner and, you know, I mean, they, but you have to be led at that position. You have to be led primarily by strategy and, and very creative game planning by the coaches. And the coaches are the ones that are going to put the players in the best position to win and be successful. Yeah. I mean, look at Belichick and Brady. I mean, and, you know, when Joe Montana and Steve Young were with Bill Walsh, I mean, they're putting you in position, you know, Terry Bradshaw with Chuck Knoll, you know, Roger Staubach with Tom Landry. I mean, they put them in position to win and be successful. And you need to have that structure in order to be successful as a quarterback. I don't care who you are, you know. So hey, right now, any one of those guys could probably lead the team. But, you know, it depends on what kind of offense you're going to build around and what you want to have there and then put the confidence and faith in the guy that's going to get it done is, Right now, it's uh, you know they got to find that, that right package right now because they definitely have to be more creative on offense. Oh, they're yeah. Gonna win. yeah. So if I were to ask you to put your coaching hat on, you might have already answered this. Which of the three do you think has the most potential? Nick Foles. Yeah. I mean, Nick Foles, I mean, we haven't seen much of the other two guys. But right now, for based on experience, what we've seen is, would have to be Nick Foles. He's, uh, he can deliver for you. Um, you know, Case had, had pretty good success last year, and I was real impressed with the rookie quarterback they had. Uh, yeah, Sean. And, yeah, in pre in preseason last year, he's a really fine quarterback. So, I mean, they got all three guys, but you can't live with three quarterbacks. you got to live with one quarterback. And, um, you know, the other guys will just have to, you know, spend time, you know, getting ready to go. When they, if they get their chance, they got to go in there and be ready to go. Okay. Now, my last question on, on, on the current Rams, and then I'm going to try to get into some stuff that I think might be a little bit more fun, both for the audience and for, for you and me. But what do the Rams need to do to be successful in L.A.? And I can't think of a better person to ask this question to than the only Ram quarterback to ever lead the L.A. Rams to a Super Bowl. Well, they're going to need leadership, and they're going to need leadership from within. They're going to lead, need leadership from some of the former players that uh, were there that, that have won past years and you know when you recognize players of the past it inspires the players to, for the future so they have to have some involvement um, with those type of and have that connection otherwise there's going to be another scene you know so they have to they have to bring into the fold of the Los Angeles you know charisma and affect the team and they have to be have the right chemistry and they have to play well together and they have to have the leadership. Leadership is the big key to, to winning games, especially when you're going to win them, you know, to go down the stretch and get in the playoffs and, and win the Western Division because you got some pretty good competition now in the West, and they really got to beat that defense up even more so than they've been in the past and, you know, and, and have the leadership on offense. They, they have to convert third down. I mean, that was just such – it was such a killer to us last year. Our inability to convert well, third down. When you're, when you're successful on first down and second down, third down is, is, is not is, is easy. If you're in third and ten all the time, just ask uh, Cam Newton what that's like in the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you plan and get some good yardage on first and second down. That's the key. Yeah. So for some fun questions, th these are kind of questions I thought about, like, you know, just for us that remember – kind of get some input from you being somebody that was obviously not just with the Rams, but in a leadership role playing quarterback. Who was the biggest prankster on the Rams when you guys played? Oh, we had a bunch of guys. And that's what I mean 
by leadership. You know, we had great guys that could lead the team that were funny guys and, you know, it was always comical and we had fun and, you know, we used to laugh and, you know, so, I mean, Dennis Hara was, 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 very, was I mean, the entire offensive line and defense, but especially the offensive line, if, if they were to take center stage and do a, a roast, it, it, you'd have, you'd be falling off your chair and you laughing so hard. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, who had the weirdest ritual on the Rams for you? Hmm. Um, oh, I don't know. Pre, pre-game antics. Um, you know, I don't. I was pretty much just thinking about what I had to do myself. But um, you know, looking around when we were in LA, we had a lot of the comedians come to town, and they would come in the locker room occasionally and start telling jokes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I was like, hey, listen to this up. That's great, man. We like this, and so. You know, that's just like playing in Hollywood. That's not like playing in, you know, the entertainment capital of the world. So. Definitely, definitely. I know I know. Fred Dreyer used to, like, dress from head to toe or something. I, I'd heard something weird about something that he would do before the games. Um, you know, he becomes a big movie star later on, so, well, that was Yeah, it. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hunter. Yeah, he was Freddy. Freddy's a, he's a character. He's another, he's another one of those guys that are just, you know, off the wall and just... Opened and so sort of Jack Jack Reynolds we used to call him Hacksaw you know Jack was yeah. was crazy in the middle and you know just our locker room play I mean it was just it was comical <laughs> you know and that kept that kept us going the whole year we had guys that you know that were in the training staff and some of our trainers and you know uh, coaches and stuff that would, would come in there and it was just you know I mean we we had fun we had fun you have to have fun and in, in, in order to play good and that's what we did. Well, I, I had the 79 Rams as, as – I did a top 10, and I had the 79 Rams as the number two team in Ram history just because of everything you guys went through from the death of Carol Rosenblum to all of the injuries to then having to play the Pittsburgh Steelers in the Super Bowl and what you guys did. Um, yeah, I, that, that team to me I think epitomized the Rams – yeah, we were we were we were a close knit team. That's for sure. We had a lot of veteran guys and the young guys who you know, respected everybody. And uh, you know, we played very well together. And there was the right chemistry that we built, the right leadership. Uh, we had great coaching. Uh, it was it was a it was an up and down season for sure. But we caught a lot of fire late in the season, and you know, we had the right you know right personnel in the game towards the end and. We just caught fire, and we, we were really good. We were really tough. We played, but I think, you know, that entire team was built on years and years of of trying to get there and finally figuring it out. Yeah. You know, they finally figured get the right chemistry. We had, you know, Don Klosterman was the general manager, and Carol was the owner, and they passed away that year, so that gave us more incentive. I mean, and everything was, you know, just just coming together and it's just too bad that Carol wasn't still around uh, when we won that Super Bowl or we got into that Super Bowl because there would have been nobody more elated uh, than he would have been because he loved that that game more than anything in the world yeah he was he was a great guy um here's this one might be a tough question for you Vince who was the most talented player that you ever played with from high school through the pros well you know I always hate to come guys because there's been so many great players you know I mean all along I mean even my high school team we had for high school football they were really good and we you know in college ball I played with a guy by the name of Bobby Thomas he was like he could dunk basketball he was a wide receiver and you know I played with great offensive linemen and just tough guys and great coaches and then in pros you know I played with Wendell Tyler who was as shifty and runner as there is and, and Eric Dickerson and just take it to the house and he was just class and he could run the ball like nobody other could run the ball and you know Lawrence McCutcheon who came into the league he was a franchise player and just watching those running backs and then you know watching receivers and the offensive the great offensive line we had I mean I had all pro offensive line I mean I, I just I've never been one to really say this was the best of all time this guy was the best because everybody in their own era was the best at what they did when they played, you know. And how could you say that you put that guy up against another guy, shoot, it would be a dead heat. You know, they're both as good. So 
But everybody has a different quality, you know, a little different quality, and that's what sets them apart. That's what makes them special. Yeah, now I have – I have to agree with you. I, I think it's always tough. You hear the comparisons, you know, Joe Montana, Johnny Unitas when I was growing up, who was better. And it, it was always tough for people that, like my dad, who grew up watching both, to really to really answer that question. And, and certainly some of the best professionals that, like John Madden, they couldn't really answer that question unequivocally. So I can, I can respect that. I it, It's... Like I said, I knew it would be a tough question. Now, this one's going to be an odd question to wrap up this kind of part. But this is, I guess, more um, for the the Ram fans that grew up watching. Like, I started in 84, but I've been following. I, I have games from the 70s and the 80s, early 80s, so I'm very familiar. And, you know, obviously you, you and Jim Everett are my two favorite quarterbacks uh, of all time. But I'd have to say you're number one just because I kind of, after seeing all those games from 79, I kind of, and what led up to the 79 season, it was, yeah, it was putting it all together finally, which was which, which was awesome. But this is an odd question. You played with Greg Bell in Buffalo in 85. Um, when the Rams traded Eric Dickerson and he ended up going to L.A., uh, what was your thought when you found out that he was going to the Rams? Um, I know that's an odd question, but having played with him, knowing that he was going to be the replacement for Eric Dickerson. Did you think that was going to be a good fit? or? Uh, you mean when Greg Bell came back to the Rams? Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's it's very difficult to replace a Hall of Famer, yeah. first of all. You know, Eric then became Hall of Fame, and, you know, as a great running back as he was, I mean, they traded me to Buffalo, and then, you know, then later traded Eric to Indianapolis. So it was, you know, it's... Um, it's unfortunate that you know the, the great players couldn't stay and remain on the same team, but you know, that's the NFL, you know, not for long. So yeah, <laughs> end up with one team and not another. But it's uh, it's very difficult to replace a Hall of Famer, and unless you get you know you had you got the Laker organization has had Hall of Famer after Hall of Famer on their team, you know with Kareem and, and Magic, and before that, you know. Um, you had Jerry West, Elgin Taylor, and then you get Magic, and you have Wilt, and then you get Shaq, and you get Kobe, you know, Kareem, Kareem, and Kobe, and I mean, it just they just keep coming, they keep flowing. It's like that's why they were a powerhouse for many, many years, you know. So you gotta you gotta have basketball a little different than football, you know, more of a superstar kind of league. Then you gotta have the only five guys on the team, where in football you have eleven, so. Yeah. But then you have offense, defense, and special teams, so you have 45 guys, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's um, – no, it's it's, uh, it's difficult to replace great ones, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I was – you know, I was unsure. And by then I was way too into football for an 8, 9, 10-year-old. I actually knew who these people were. But, I, you know, looking back at Greg's career for that short two-and-a-half-year period he was there, I thought he did a nice job of – not letting us miss a beat as much as – I mean we missed a beat, but obviously if we had Dickerson 89, we would have won. But certainly – you know, certainly helped the running back situation I think because Charles White was having all those issues off the field unfortunately. So the last thing that I want to do is word association where I'm just going to basically give you eight words and I want you to um, – I want to know which one of these words describes a Ram player um, that you played with. Um, the first one that pops in your head. All right. Okay. Loyal. Loyal? Yep. Jackie Slater. Jackie Slater. Okay. Tough. Jack Youngblood. Definitely. Fun? Venice era. Friend? Wendell Tyler. Laugh? Laugh. Laugh. <laughs> uh, she, Venice era again. <laughs> Trust. Rich Saul. Excited. Preston Denard. Preston Denard. You guys had a good connection too. Yeah. Humble. Humble. Uh, Colin Bryant. Colin Bryant. Oh, Colin Bryant. Awesome. Yeah, I thought that would be kind of fun. The last question I'm going to yeah. ask you, Vince, and, and again, I know you're busy, so I'll I appreciate you doing this. I really do. Who did you idolize growing up? Could be anyone. Like for me, it was my dad. But um, yeah. for you, who who was it? 
Oh, it was my dad. Yeah, obviously, my dad. But in football, probably Bart Starr, Johnny Unitas, those two. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, Vince, thanks for uh, partaking in LA yeah. Rams Central. Thank I'll... you very much. It was a good, great interview. Some great things there. Well, I, I appreciate it. Behind you. Keep following the Rams. Oh, absolutely. And, and um, you know, hopefully maybe in the future I can get your input on uh, – how the Rams won the Super Bowl when it when it happens here pretty soon, huh? Okay, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks so much, Vince. You have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So that was Vince Ferragamo, and that is a wrap for LA Rams Central. I hope you guys enjoyed it. A um, little bit of fun. A uh, lot of fun, actually. Uh, really excited. Feel like I was – I felt nervous doing that interview, but – I'm glad he said it went well. I thought it went well. Hopefully you guys like it. Please give your feedback on the bottom. And thank you for watching LA Ram Central.